Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hookstra. I apologize for posting this video one day late. We should be back on schedule for this upcoming weekend. Last week, we had three contests. We had the Weekly Leak Code Contest 88. We had from Code Forces Educational 45 on Sunday morning. And we also had uh, throughout the week the Code Chef June Long Challenge that just finished this morning. Taking a look at the top 10 leaderboards, they're shown here. Uh, most notably, we had KRK finishing in first place in the Code Forces Educational 45 contest. And we also had in first place, uh, I do not know how to pronounce this individual's name because C U I A O is not actually a uh, Chinese syllable. So we will just pronounce that as C Xiang in first place. And uh, in second was Dream Moon. In today's video, we'll be covering the third problem from the Leak Code Contest 88 entitled Loud and Rich. The problem states, in a group of n people labeled 0 to n minus 1, each person has different amounts of money and different levels of quietness. For convenience, we'll call the person with label x simply person x. We'll say that the ith element of the vector richer is equal to x, y if person x definitely has more money than person y. Note that richer may only be a subset of valid observations. Also, we'll say that the xth element of the vector quiet equals q if person x has quietness q. Now return answer where answer x, other, in other words, the xth element of the vector answer equals y if y is the least quiet person, that is the person y with the smallest value of quiet uh, y among all people who definitely have equal to or more money than person x. And note that the length of our vector quiet will be less than 500 and all of the values are going to be different within quiet and the length of our vector richer is going to be at most n times n minus 1 divided by 2. Uh, so let's take a look at the example that Lee Code gave us as this is a pretty confusing problem statement but the question isn't actually uh, that difficult when once you wrap your uh, head around what it's actually asking. So this is the one example that Leco provided us with. So we have a vector of vectors where each of the vectors inside our main vector is just uh, two elements. And then we have our vector quiet, which represents uh, the number of people we have and the quietness levels of those people or individuals. Uh, and note that the uh, lower the value uh, for each individual, that means the louder they are. Otherwise, uh, the, the less quiet they are. Uh, and then what basically the question is asking us is, uh, given an individual, uh, sort of zero through seven here, figure out who the loudest person is uh, that has at least more money or equal to uh, the same amount of money of the person that was asked. So this is the vector for each of the individuals. So it's saying here that for individual zero, the loudest person that has at least or more money than individual zero is going to be person five. And the same thing for person one and so on and so forth. So the way to understand this is to look at a visual representation of a graph that can be constructed from our uh, vector of vectors uh, richer here. So we'll start by taking a look at the first element of our richer vector, which is 1, 0. So what this is saying is that individual 1 has uh, definitely more money than individual 0. So we can start with individual 0 and then sort of draw an arrow towards individual 1. And this means that 1 has more money than than individual zero. If we take a look at our second element, uh, we have two and one. That means that individual two definitely has more money than individual one. So we can add, uh, you know, this sort of uh, individual with an arrow from one to two. And so from just the first two elements, we know two things now, or three things. Uh, individual one has more money than individual zero. Individual two has more money than individual one. And also individual two has more money than individual one. Uh, so if we do the rest of the elements, uh, this one is 3 and 1, so uh, individual 3 has more money than individual 1. Uh, 3 has more money than individual 7. 4 has more money than individual 3, and so does 5 and 6. So we end up with a graph looking like this. And if we add to our graph uh, these uh, quietness levels up in a superscript, it would look as follows. So 
Now we have a representation of our input and we simply need to solve what the question's asking. So uh, going back to our answer vector that we're going to return, it, it, when we are looking at index zero, it's asking uh, which of the individuals that have more money than individual uh, zero uh, is the loudest. So if we look at every single individual that we know is louder than zero, that'll be zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, out of all these individuals, we can tell that the loudest individual is individual five, because they have a quietness level of one, and the lower the quietness level, the louder the individual. Six, seven, four, five, two, and three are all greater than one. Uh, so that's basically the general idea. We'll walk through uh, how to uh, develop this answer vector, uh, but that's the idea. So let's um, uh, zoom in on this a bit. And what we're going to do is we're initially going to initialize our vector answer to be uh, every element set to negative 1. And then what we're going to do is simply a depth first search uh, for each one of these and we're going to combine that with memoization so that if you've already visited an individual you won't have to uh, do a depth first search you can just return the memoized answer at that point and that will give us our answer so starting with uh, zero we are going to call our dfs function and then we are going to move to everyone that is directly that has uh, more money directly than zero so that's going to be one and then from one we'll call dfs again and that's going to explore two and five, two and three. And so once we hit uh, two, there's nowhere else to go. And so we know that uh, for two, uh, it is going to have the most, uh, the loudest volume uh, greater than or equal to. So two will simply have uh, its itself uh, for the loudest person because there's no one that has more money that we know definitely. And I should note that even though two is at the same level of three that doesn't necessarily mean that two has less money than four five or six technically two could be up here uh, be we don't have any guaranteed relationship between two four five and six uh, so now that we have uh, finished exploring two we're going to come over to three uh, three does have people or individuals that have more money so then we're going to explore four uh, four does not have any one that has more money than them, so uh, four is also going to be the loudest person, uh, and so we'll put four there, and that'll be the same for five and six, so five and six will go here, and then at this point, it will return, our algorithm will return that five uh, has the greatest amount, uh, or the, the loudest, is the loudest individual, and so that'll be compared with the uh, loudness of the sort of, I guess, parent or child um, and because five is louder than three uh, for three we're gonna put individual five here and then this is gonna sort of uh, we're gonna work our way back through our recursive call stack uh, at this point we still have memoized five and we are going to check if five is louder than the individual one and that is the case so one will also get uh, five and then we get back to zero and once again zero will also get five uh, as one is less than three uh, and so then we're going to continue down uh, looping and to do our dfs on each one of these elements but every single one of them has been memoized except for the seventh one so each time we try to enter our dfs function uh, we're simply going to see that this is a non-negative one value and we're not going to enter the dfs function uh, we're going to immediately return from it uh, until we get to number seven uh, individual seven so at this point we're going to look at it uh, then we're going to call dfs for its uh, the individuals that have more money but this has already been memoized so this will return five uh, but five is not greater than or is, does, is not louder than seven because seven has a quietness of zero which is less than one so individual seven will end up with a value of seven so once we have uh, fully explored each of the elements in our answer vector uh, we will have our solution and we just need to return this so that's our full algorithm a uh, little bit of a confusing problem statement but not too bad once you understand what the problem is asking for so so let's take a look at our code. So here we have our C++ solution with two functions, our main function loud and rich, which returns a vector of integers and takes as parameters a vector, a vector of integers richer and a vector of integers quiet. Note that VVI and VI are just type aliases for a vector of ints and a vector of vector of ints, uh, just to make the code a little bit more concise. 
And when we enter this function, we are going to immediately construct our vector of vector integers g, which represents our graph. And then we are going to uh, set up our graph by uh, having a range base for loop over our vector richer. And we are just going to push back each of the elements uh, that a uh, individual can uh, get to by having the other individual have more money than them. Uh, so once we've done that, we have our uh, data representation of uh, the graph that we showed in our visual example. Then we're going to construct a vector of integers, which we'll call ANS for answer. And we're going to initialize this to have the same size as quiet, which is the number of individuals that we have, and initialize uh, each one of the values to be negative one at first. So we know which ones haven't been uh, DFS'd already. Then we call a range base for loop, and for each of the elements in our uh, answer vector, we are going to call our DFS function. So when we enter our DFS function, the first thing we're going to do is check to see whether or not we've already calculated uh, the loudest individual that has uh, the same or greater amount of money as the current individual. And uh, if we know this, if the value in our answer vector is not negative one, so greater than or equal to zero, if so, we're just going to return the already calculated, in other words, memoized value. If not, we uh, initialize that value to be just the loudness of the current individual. And then we're going to loop through all of the individuals that directly have more money uh, than that individual. And we're going to do that by calling the DFS function. And then uh, this is going to be recursive called to explore every single person that has more money than our current individual at index i and once we've done this uh, inside each of those functions we're going to be setting uh, those values and we can then just use the result of this to check does uh, anyone above have uh, louder or less quietness than the current individual if so set that uh, current individual's value uh, to that person's index and uh, once we do that, we are just going to return this, and uh, so that's so that we can get this value in future calls of DFS. And once we've done that, uh, we are going to have our solution. So note that we're sort of discarding the return value from our DFS function in this range-based for loop, but that's okay because we know it gets set inside this function. So once we do that, we return our vector answer from our main function, and that's the code. So let's take a look at the Java solution. So thanks to Lee215, uh, who I've referenced his solutions a couple of times in previous videos. This one I've verbatim taken from him because it shows a slightly alternate approach. So he is, instead of using a uh, an array of rays, he's using a hash map of lists, which is the same idea. Uh, and I guess he's just declaring them outside the functions because then you don't have to pass them around as much. Um, so he's doing the same thing, just setting up a local n to be the uh, length of quiet, initializing uh, his... Uh, hash map of lists in these two lines here and uh, then initializing res which is the equivalent of my vector answer in the C++ solution initializing those to have a value of negative one and then here uh, in a for loop uh, making a call to DFS uh, the same way I was with less parameters because these are declared globally and the DFS function almost looks identical uh, checking to see if our value in res has been memoized if not we're going to come in here initialize it the same way uh, in C++ you know it's called a range based for loop but in Java, it's called an enhanced for loop uh, when you're just using this syntax. And then he has the same if statement, except he swapped it uh, to have the DFS call on the right. Therefore, you need a greater than sign. Uh, and then the same uh, assignment there if this uh, conditional statement is satisfied. And at the end, returning res i as well. So once you finish this for loop, uh, you can just return uh, your array of integers res. And last but not least, the Python solution. Uh, so you can see this looks a little bit different, uh, but it's the exact same idea as the solution before, uh, using a map or a dictionary, as it's called in Python, of lists. And uh, we have a, a bit of a different way to initialize our return array res by, with this notation, negative one times the length of quiet. And then we have our DFS function, which looks, once again, very, very similar to our code in both C++ and Java, just slightly different uh, notation.
And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity of this problem. So the time complexity will either be uh, linear in the length of richer or quadratic in the length of quiet. Technically, uh, the maximum of uh, either of those, depending on which is larger. And once again, thanks to Lee215, uh, who is responsible and deserves the credit for both the Python and the Java solution. So I'll leave links to his Lee code post in the description down below. Taking a look at the contest taking place next week slash this morning, uh, we had the Code Forces round 487 for Division 2 this morning. On Thursday, we have the second online round, round 2B from Top Coder for the TCO 18 tournament. So if you didn't qualify in round 2A, uh, this is your second chance. On Saturday, we have the start of the June Circuits Contest. We also have from Code Forces round 488 for Division 1 and 2. And of course, we have the weekly Elite Code Contest 89 in the evening. And finally, finishing off the week from Code Chef, we have the June cookoff at noon on Sunday. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.